Um, so I'm going to talk about fixed frozen tissues and your question really led on pretty nicely there. So um, fixed frozen tissues don't have an officially published protocol for Xenium, but they do have a technical note which is linked in my slides, which provides a um, suggested protocol. Um, and the method is adapted from one of the Visium protocols. So fixed frozen tissues are pretty popular in some fields, for example, neuroscience and those who work with rodents. And so that might be one reason why you're thinking about this. And in our lab, we were really interested in using fixed frozen tissues because we actually prepare a lot of tissues that are quite precious or difficult to generate. So for example, the demyelinated tissue that I told you about takes like nine weeks to generate. So we would really like to be able for those blocks to be compatible with other types of wet lab experiments beyond just Xenium. And so that's why the fixed frozen uh, protocol was kind of attractive to us. And so everything that I'll share in this portion of the module is really just based on our experience in the Miller lab using the mouse brain and particularly using the adult mouse brain, but we have moved on to use the, the developing brain as well. Um, so for tissue harvesting and fixation, I'm going to go through things pretty quickly since Melanie has already outlined things so well. Um, but what we do is perform cardiac perfusions to fix the tissue. So we administer a terminal dose of anesthesia and then we perfuse um, one times PBS to clear out all of the blood. And then we infuse with our 4% um, paraformaldehyde or PFA. And we do about 15 mils per adult animal. And then we harvest our desired tissue. So for us, that's the brain. And then we immediately immerse and fix this in 4% PFA overnight um, at four degrees. And then following this, we have our cryopreservation steps. So we take the tissue out of the PFA and wash it three times with just one times PBS. And then we do a sucrose protection gradient. So we immerse the sample fully in 15% sucrose solution at four degrees for about 16 to 24 hours or until the tissue sinks. And then we immerse the sample in 30% sucrose solution, again, four degrees, 16 to 24 hours or until the tissue has completely sunk. Um, it's really important that it sinks to the bottom of your tube to ensure the full saturation of that sucrose and so after that, we're then going to freeze um, the, and section the tissue. So I won't go over it too much in detail, but we do embed the tissue in OCT and then we rapidly freeze it and we store it at minus 70 until further processing. Before sectioning on the cryostat, we generally equilibrate our blocks for about 30 to 60 minutes prior to sectioning. And that really ensures that the tissue is equilibrated to that temperature and the sections are just cut really smoothly and really nicely. If you don't equilibrate, you can get some kind of tearing and breaking and just you just have a really bad time. So um, you collect 10 micron sections and Melanie's already outlined this perfectly, so I'm not going to go into detail. Um, so the sample preparation step on the first day is the main thing that differs um, between the fresh frozen and the fixed frozen. Um, so I'll go over this um, very briefly. We incubate the slide on the thermal cycler after we take it out of the um, minus 70 at 37 degrees for one minute. And then we subject, subject the slides to a series of immersion wash uh, or immersions at room temperature. So we do PBS, we do millicule water, a couple of ethanol steps, and then back to water. And then we perform the decross linking. So we dry the slide, set it up into the Xenium cassette. We add PBS T, and then we add decross linking buffer, and we incubate that according to the Xenium protocol. And following that, we remove that decross linking buffer, and we perform some washes. And then we're ready to proceed to the probe hybridization, ligation and amplification protocol, which is exactly the same um, as the fresh frozen protocol. So it's all the same from there on in. So I think probably the thing that people are most interested in and what's kind of most important is how the data are from the fixed frozen tissue, how they might compare with the fresh uh, frozen. And so what I thought I would do is try and show some comparison data um, to you so you can have an idea of this. 
So first of all, I'm going to show some general Zedium QC metrics. So I want to thank Sarah Ebert, who's a virtual TA today, for sharing with me her fresh frozen tissue. And I'm showing you some of my fixed frozen tissue here. Now, of course, these are brain sections. They're from quite different regions of the brain, but we were able to do kind of a rough comparison to see what sort of metrics we got. Um, so if we look at our median transcripts per cell, we do see a little bit less with the fixed. Um, but if we, as we move on, we're going to look at expression patterns across the tissue and see how that actually impacts our data. Um, if we look at some of the other metrics, we can see that we have quite similar percentages of gene tra transcripts that are high quality, um, both for the pre-designed genes and for the custom genes. And in terms of our negative controls, we also find quite similar metrics, which are all within the limits um, of what Xenium would recommend for you. Um, so how do the data compare? So I'm going to show you um, a subset ROI now from the stem cell niche, which we call the subventricular zone in the brain. I extracted this from the fresh section that you've seen and from the fixed section that you've seen and processed this through Surat. And so I'm showing you the data. This is the cluster in here on the UMAP. And I merged these uh, data together. And so I'm also showing you um, the fixed and the fresh coded here. So we can see a relatively good intermingling between the cells. We obviously have some quite distinct clusters uh, that are just present in the fixed or just present in the fresh. However, like I said, we were at quite different regions of the brain for these two sections. So we would kind of expect some differences. So what I'm gonna focus on are cells that we don't expect to change across that um, rostral caudal axis. And so that's the microglia and the endothelial cells in our case. So you can see for both of these, there's quite good integration of the uh, data. And I'm gonna just show you some quick heat maps that show some microglia signature genes. We can see this in the fresh and the fixed. We have maybe marginally lower expression of some of these core genes in our fixed tissues uh, compared to the fresh, but generally the patterns of expression are very similar. And again, that's the same for our endothelial cells as well. We have very similar patterns of expression. So just to summarize what I hope I've told you, um, and if I've gone too quickly, do feel free to interrupt me um, during lunch or whatever to ask questions. But a technical note uh, does exist for fixed frozen tissue, um, but it isn't officially supported by 10X. Um, the fresh frozen sample prep is very similar to fresh frozen with just a few adaptation, um, but they are the same from the probe hybridization steps. In our hands, we have seen some differences in the QC metrics, but overall, the fresh and the fixed frozen tissues yield data of very similar quality. We've been able to identify all the cell types that we would expect to in both tissues. We see similar patterns of gene expression. Um, and so the data also integrate and merge relatively well. Of course, when you're setting up your experiments, you're going to probably want to have a consistent method of preparation if you're ever going to compare tissues or integrate the data. But I think it is a good thing to know that they do integrate well because it shows that the data are relatively similar. And so with all that said, we are finally going to eat lunch. <laughs>